Somebody stop me. It's harmless phosphorescence. Everyone, uh, this is Thoreau Smiley, and I run this podcast like my own personal piggy bank. I am joined by... I'm Josh Cece, and this pays dick. <laughs> I'm Brian Lesh, and I'd like to report a case of stolen pajamas. I'm Alaric Weber. I want a proctologist standing by. <laughs> and this is Harmless Phosphorescence, <laughs> the podcast where we watch every theatrically released full-length live-action superhero movie ever made. We gather some research into the production and the source material, and then we tell you... You, the listener, all about it. This week, we are watching The Mask. This is the story of Stanley Ipkiss. Stanley, you are the nicest guy. <laughs> really, you are. Yeah. His job is at the bank. You're 40 minutes late. Now, that's the same as stealing. I'm sorry, Mr. Dickey. It, it'll never happen again. He loves his dog. Come on, Ron. Give him to me. Drop it. He's polite to his landlord. Ipkiss. Do you have any idea what time it is? You know, Mrs. Peenman. What? Nothing. And the most exciting thing in his life are his pajamas. But now... Hey, you! What are you doing down there? I'm just looking for... my mask! All that is about to change. <laughs> because Stanley Ipkiss is not the man he used to be. Smoking! It's like it brings your innermost desires to life. You become some sort of love-crazy wild man. I want him here tomorrow, alive. Now you have to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Do ya? Punks? <laughs> Jim Carrey is... That's the guy! Hello! <laughs> the Mask. Ooh, somebody stop me! Yeah, the... The Mask! The Mask, yeah, yeah with uh, <laughs> the Pee Wee Herman music. From the movie, uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Um, (laughs) The Mask, it came out on July 29th, 1994. It had a running time of 101 minutes. It cost $23 million and took in $351 million at the box office. It made this... Yeah, 1994 was Jim Carrey's year. He, He did Ace Ventura, The Mask, and then Dumb and Dumber. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Um, his box office that year was insane. He was a... Household name. Yep. Yeah. Um, see, he got paid $450,000 for the mask. Oh, man. And then Dumb and Dumber, he signed um, like two weeks after the mask um, premiered and <laughs> signed for $7 million. Yeah. So, what timing. Boom, there wow. you go. Um, so it is time once again, everybody, to play Box Office Top 10 for the week of July 29th, 1994, everybody. Where did the mask premiere? Joshua CC. I mean, number one, right? So 1994, it made 300 and some million? 350 in 94. My guess is one. Yeah, My guess is one. I mean, adjusted, that's like close to a billion. I'm going to say number two. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I looked at everyone. Like, are we just? I mean, if everyone um, wants to take the same number, <laughs> there's no prizes. I'm, I want the prize. <laughs> this casino. Has... I'm gonna buck the trend and go with four. Woo! Ooh, he's always a maverick. All right, at number ten, still hanging in. We talked about this uh, last time with the shadow. We've got I love trouble. At number ten, number nine, speed. At number eight, the shadow is still hanging in there. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Uh, number seven, Angels in the Outfield. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, it's charming. It's good. Yeah, terrible movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd? Uh, yeah, and Danny Glover. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that movie. I bet he really was too old for that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For well, baseball. <laughs> hey, that's Disney, though, man. I bet that movie pays. Oh, oh yeah. No. Um, number, number six, opening this week, It Could Happen to You. 
um, that might have Julia Roberts in it. I do not know. <laughs> it's about the flu. <laughs> oh. uh, number five, The Lion King. Mm. Number four, The Client. Number three, True Lies. Oh, that was a good movie. Yeah, it was. Uh, number two, that was that See, was. I saw that, so maybe that, instead of that, that was Arnold Schwarzenegger's last, um, uh, like a list box office phenomenon movie. Yeah, he hasn't made one since. Huh. He had a string of failures throughout the late nineties. Became <laughs> governor, and then you know, since then, <laughs> since then, it's all about paying Maria <laughs> all that uh, alimony. Yeah. Um, number two, Forrest Gump, which means wow. number one is The Mask. Forrest Gump. Forrest. Wow, so it unseated Forrest. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Forrest Gump was number one the previous week. Um, so, yeah, I was traveling then when this came out because I know I was traveling when Forrest Gump came out because everywhere we went across the country, that's all anyone had to talk about. So that might be why I didn't see the mask. Mm. Everyone gumping it. I, <laughs> East Coast, West Coast, <laughs> North and South. It was everybody. You read it? You it, seen it? <laughs> It, it it united Biggie and Tupac. Yeah, yeah it united everyone. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, no Gump was it was all about Gump there that oh, year. Boy, um, I'm pretty sure I saw it on on VHS later that year, probably or maybe even '95. I saw it a couple of years later. It's another story that's not pertinent. Uh, so yeah, number one, The Mask. The Mask, yeah. number one. Um, it was adapted from a comic book, Alaric. Yes, hello. <laughs> hello, Al. How, hey. How, how are you today? What, what, what to brings studio? you to the studio? I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm still waiting on that proctologist. <laughs> like, and I have a great uh, recipe for a butternut squash. <laughs> Somebody get this man a doctor. <laughs> all right. So uh, the comics. Um, the uh, concept was created by Mike Richardson, the founder of Dark Horse Comics. Oh, wow. Oh. Um, and uh, writer slash artist Mark Badger. Uh, the, the mask spelled M-A-S-Q-U-E. So continental. The mask. Yeah. He uh, first appeared in as a black and white strip in Dark Horse Presents in 1986. Huh. Um, he was a little different from what we know him to be now. Uh, he was... Still had the mask, but he was an assassin who wears a special mask that uh, seemed to endow him with superpowers. All right. Um, So not a hero to begin with. Mark Badger was a little uh, uh, more political than uh, Mike Richardson (laughs) wanted him to be. He was a honey badger from way back. (laughs) So he he was the uh, Kirby to uh, the Stanley. Uh, Yeah. Jack Jack Kirby is is like a famous like and Randy and like. Um, libertarian. Right. Um, I'm not familiar with uh, Mark Badger's politics. Um, <laughs> well, damn it, Al, what do we pay you for? <laughs> <laughs> you dick. don't. Um, Base dick. Base dick. dick. <laughs> um, so uh, what Richardson originally had in mind, he, uh, he, he rebooted the character in 1989 in another Dark Horse anthology book titled Mayhem. Mm-mm. Um, and Mayhem lasted oh. mm. four issues. Um, uh, the Mark was another character that was in there, and Mecha. The I Mask, believe. the Mark. The, the Mask, the Mark, and Mecha were the, the three stories that were in uh, Mayhem. Uh, it was in uh, the Mayhem that the Stanley Ipkiss character was introduced and ultimately killed by his girlfriend, Kathy. Oh, oh. dang. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the mask was pretty dark and and ultra violent, um, yeah. As a comic book, uh, also introduced in the Mayhem stories was Detective Mitch Killaway. Oh, okay, uh, Killaway. <laughs> oh, Killaway. Uh, uh, Jeez, I was well, ke- I kept trying yeah. to run Ipkiss around in my mind, wondering if it was uh, oh, like an anagram. Or, yeah, yeah. Hmm. backwards is nothing. Yeah. It's a fun name for here. Anyways, for, for an alter here. So Mayhem was canceled after four issues, um, but that after they got, um, I guess, through with that, that first stretch of the story, um, The Mask as a book with its its own title would again be reintroduced in 1991. Um, again, for a four-issue run, um, 
the the stories that were from that were printed in Mayhem would be republished after the four issue run of the Mask as the Mask Number Zero, mm-hmm. and then uh, put into when they did their uh, trade paperback. Uh-huh. Um, uh, the Mask Returns was another four issue run from October ninety two to March ninety three. Oh, right as they were getting ready to make this thing. Right. Um, so the stories from Mayhem, uh, The Mask, and The Mask Returns were all written by John Arcudi and illustrated by Doug uh, Monkey, Mankey, something like that. Um, the ma- half in- man, half, half monkey, half man. <laughs> yeah, his man key. The give it a turn. The mask in quotes uh, <laughs> referred to the actual item. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the crow debate comes back. Right. Right. Is it the thing or is the, it the guy? <laughs> in the comics, uh, yeah, the both uh, are acceptable. the The entity like created the, the entity created by wearing the mask was typically known as Big Head. <laughs> and, oh. Wait, Todd and the monsters? <laughs> uh, Big Head. So, okay, oh, uh, yeah. was he a, a was he a, a magical like uh, you know? Anchor. Yes, he yeah. he had the same uh, characteristics. Uh, the movie is uh, loosely based on uh, the on these runs. Uh, the I meant Big Head. Big Head. Oh, because <laughs> in this it's like Loki, right? Is their best guess right? Um, I I think I'm pretty sure Loki was uh, the Loki reference was created for the movie. Uh, I didn't see any mentions of Loki. Um, mm. oh, to the comic book. Interesting. This is actually one I cool element. I really wanted to find uh, the comic book um, and read it for this, um, but I was unable to find it at Bookman's. Um, it's okay, Bookman's. I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So originally, um, when they were making this, they were going to make it as an R-rated kind of like horror. Style pick. Oh, scarier? Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to say sexier. No, 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 no. Um, it was going to be very dark, very violent. Um, when they signed Jim Carrey, they decided to comic it up. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's since become a dramatic actor. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll get to him, and it's just fantastic. Yeah. Um, he, his performance. I, I think when they uh, when they wrote this, the, the Cuban Pete scene, um, that also cemented the the tone yeah. uh, of the movie. <laughs> yeah, once you're doing a mamba line, it's hard to go dark. <laughs> no, don't you remember that in The Omen? <laughs> oh, you don't win friends with Sally. <laughs> you don't win friends with possession. You don't. So um, in in this whole run, uh, Stanley Ipkiss, um, so the, the mask uh, brought out uh, it, it was more more so than in the movie. Um, it kind of gave everybody more murderous intentions than they ever would have dreamed. Uh, mm. um, so Stanley used the mask to exact petty revenge, petty and violent revenge against those who had slighted him. Slighted him. Slighted <laughs> him, yeah. Wow. Um, the, Cut him off in traffic? Or? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the auto shop uh, scene, the, auto sh- the mechanics oh, yeah. were some of his first victims. Um, Kathy takes the mask from Stanley, uh, tries it on, ends up killing him, much to her later horror, and then gives it to Detective Kellaway. Detective Kellaway uses the mask to take down the crime lords, plaguing his city and his career. And um, so it's these elements that are sort of tossed in. Um, After that, the mask is, uh, it's stolen from Kellaway, and... uh, one of the thugs puts it on a, a wimpy mob driver uh, as a joke, and he ends up killing all those thugs and then all the crime lords in town and becomes the, the new crime boss in Edge City. <laughs> all uh, right. So, yeah. And then uh, Kathy comes back using her, femi- <laughs> oh, using her feminine wiles to take down the new <laughs> big, big head crime boss. And her, hard, her hardline right. attitudes on human resources. Right. <laughs> So she Kathy. she tricks no, every uh, human resource. <laughs> the lady is named Kathy. Every one, except the Lindas. But anyway, she tricks um, the the new no, the, the mob Kathy. boss, uh, Big Head, into taking off oh, the Big mask. Oh, the mob boss. I see. Oh no, Big Head is the, whoever puts the mask on, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. That's what I thought. Yeah. So I'm back. Um, so that was another element: the the tricking the the guy to take the mask off, yes. which we see gotcha. in the movie. Yeah. Um, the 
overarching result of wearing the mask is murder and ultra violence, <laughs> as well as the tendency to go insane. Sweet. Um, a tendency. The list of <laughs> yeah, night terrors, <laughs> diarrhea, <laughs> permanent Res- insanity, resp- res- respiratory. All right, go ahead. The the list of superpowers, itchy legs, <laughs> that are given on bad at math. The list of superpowers that are <laughs> given that are cited on Wikipedia um, are numerous. Um, basically, this is I don't know one of the more powerful superheroes <sighs> what? around. Uh, or yeah, criminal. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <I've learned. laughs> yeah. It doesn't seem to really make people very heroic. Um, in this oh, movie, right. it seems yeah. to be about yeah. as heroic as you can possibly get, yeah. which is very much. Mo- yeah, most of the time, um, the wearer would turn at best into um, a, a cruel anti-hero, <laughs> um, possibly saving some people sometimes because uh, accidentally, <laughs> accidentally. Uh, in the the comic Kellaway, he uh, um, yeah, he did take on the mob. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm but, sure I'm sure all the innocent bystanders were fine. <laughs> right, exactly. You can't make an omelet without not breaking the eggs you're not going to use. Right. So the uh, the mass comics would continue after the release of this movie. Some based on the original tone of the the, the comics, uh, the more uh, violent and murderous. Uh, tone therein and then some more based on the movie and then the subsequent animated series which ran from august 95 to august 97 on cbs all right oh yeah yeah the cartoon i remember yeah being on not watching it i was way too old for it at the time did you watch it brian the mask cartoon like saturday morning no it was never a thing that i got into Mm. Um, very discerning taste as a child. <laughs> my Saturday morning cartoon. Into. <laughs> <laughs> Important shit. I was man. too. Yeah. There's only four hours of that block. That's right. So you've well, them you've got to choose. Well, yeah, yeah you absolutely. have to choose. Are you going to go with like some ABC OG read more? Are you right. going to like way back when? Head no, over and I'm going to try another one of those the bell. Sonic the fucking Hedgehog cartoons. See him eat chili dogs. Oh, Jesus. Oh, don't even take me I'm back. so glad I'm too old. I was right. too old for Sonic when it was uh, in cartoon form. Great video game, but terrible cartoon. I have seen some, like, the like all the, like, don't do, don't good. do drug oh. Sonic stuff. Like, it was amazing. Don't do drugs, but eat a dozen chili dogs. The only way to do that is on drugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Improved by drugs is the little... Uh, so this movie um, was directed by Chuck <laughs> Russell. Chuck Russell, good old Chuck. He wrote Chuck an- Russell Terrier. I was yeah, because <laughs> there is a Jack yeah. Russell. Right. He's all the, this is my cousin Jack. Uh, was he, it? He gets a part. I try. Oh, I tried to look it up, and that Milo, the the dog, um, he was not Wishbone, and he was not the dog That's from Frasier. He was. That- he was oh. not either of those dogs. I That's looked it exactly up. what we said What's last he doing night, now? and Andrea looked it up. Yeah, but I was like, is that Wishbone? Did, do we have an answer as to what the dog's doing now? Um, get the dog on the show? Well, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, this dead. Was, that dog is dead. 25 years ago. You were looking at a dead dog the whole time. <laughs> Think about that, everybody. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> okay, so... um, The the actor's name was Max. Max. Yeah, yeah that's uh, right. Is that an actor? He was yeah. in one of the... Yeah. Well, yeah, I love... That's a performing... On, that's a trained dog. On IMDb. Uh, <laughs> what what are, act, what humans are actors, are trained, anyways? trained humans. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> very true. On, that I, knife had a name on in the shadow. IMDb, his, uh, his bio says, Max is an actor known for The Mask and Mr. Accident. In 2000. He's an actor oh that's God. best known. Yeah. <laughs> He's best known for. He's a dog. <laughs> He's best known for being a good boy. <laughs> shitting on, not, uh, yeah, uh, not on shitting the grass. On the living room floor. I, He's a Jack Russell Terrier. He's probably best known for being like super intense about a single <laughs> dot in the corner. <laughs> yeah. The doorbell rang. George Lucas never had to tell him faster, more intense. No, he was ready to go. Uh, I Milo was one of my favorites. He was, he was one of the best parts of this movie. Milo was yeah. great. Um, that scene where um, 
where uh, uh, Stanley's trying to get all the money back in the closet. Uh-huh. The uh-huh. dog was not supposed to be in that scene. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just, he ran onto set and they couldn't get him off. So Jim Carrey just improv with him. <laughs> the dog improv. Yeah. 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 Like, the whole like grabbing the, the frisbee part. with his mouth and everything. Yeah. None of that was supposed to happen. <laughs> that was just the dog being the dog. Max brought it. The dog's a comic genius. That's he why is. he only has two movie credits. <laughs> That's yeah. right. He, in and out, he's done. Not a very good dog actor. So, directed by Chuck Russell, um, <laughs> who, who wrote and directed The Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. There were a lot of dogs in that one, too, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, there, was a, there, there was a lot of stuff in that movie. Um, that was uh, probably the best Nightmare on Elm Street after the first one, I think. Wait, it, the Dream? Dream Warriors. The ones where the teens are all in oh, the no, they go I remember. back. That's the one where... Dream f- Child was yeah. fun. That's the one where Freddy Krueger says, bitch, so often. <laughs> so often. Where they did the Scary Terry based scary off of that one. Scary Oh, God. Um, he then went on to write and direct the 1988 Blob. Uh, um, who is Marlon Brando? Um, <laughs> the 1988 Blob. Um, then after the mask, he did uh, Eraser, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, he did The Scorpion King in 2002. Um, then a few things nobody's ever watched: Jungly, I Am Wrath, India, King of Martial Arts. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. He doesn't have. There's yeah, not much. About him, uh, it was, <laughs> he and the dog retired. They <laughs> bought houses on Martha Vineyard next to each other. Uh, they, they just drink wine they and just talk now. So occasionally go rowing out on the lake every now and then. Uh, let's see. Uh, it was written by Mike Werb. Um, he has a screenplay by credit. Uh, so uh, right. we have got a couple teams of writers here, which usually means a change in tone, which we kind of talked about already. But um, Mike Werb uh, did wrote. The Secret of the Ice Cave, The Human Shield. What is that? <laughs> That's a how-to video. It's, it's like The Human Centipede. But yeah. <laughs> if anyone's nearby, use them as a human shield. He, Or just a movie from the perspective of someone being used as a human shield. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I don't, I don't want to know about him. He went on to write Dark Man 3, Die, Dark Man, Die. Yes. Oh, yeah. The Dark Man, the. Uh, things that go bump. Face Off. Ooh, Face Off. Well, he wrote that. Face yeah, off. he wrote well, Face Off. Face, Some, somebody face off. wrote Face yeah. Off. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I'm going to take his face off. off. And know? then they're going to face off. <laughs> Just to touch on Face Off for a moment. Please. I, I don't know if it could have been any better. No, it couldn't have. <laughs> No, it was perfectly cast, yeah. perfectly acted. It was it's, a perfect movie. It was perfect. You but, know, the ridiculousness of the switching, but once the switching is done and they're acting as the each other. Oh, yeah. Travolta as Kate and vice versa. It's, oh, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it is so bad, you guys. It's so bad. It is. Uh, uh, he wrote Laura <laughs> Croft Tomb Raider with uh, Angelina Jolie's styrofoam breasts. Uh-huh. Oh, that was the trapezoidal, yeah, yeah. top. Um, he wrote the Curious George movie in 2006. <laughs> He's got uh, based on the, the range, book I guess. <laughs> I, I've I've had to watch that a few times. Jude, oh, Jude was very yeah. young in the yeah. early 2000s yeah. or two, 2010s. Who was the man in the yellow hat? Donald Sutherland. <laughs> um, it wasn't it Kevin Spacey, and at the end he takes the yellow hat off and starts walking normally. Oh, God. That's right. <laughs> um, he wrote Firehouse Dog in 2007. He wrote Tekken, the Tekken movie in 2007. Wow. Oh, man. Tekken. Yeah, yeah that, movie. That, how many Oscars did that win? Tekken. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. <laughs> all, all of them. Uh, all of them. <laughs> Are they going to learn about Tech War out on the <laughs> yeah. street? Best dance fighting sequence in a film. <laughs> I've never seen Tekken. Uh, yeah. Neither have I. Okay. Really, the game is, <laughs> play the I game believed you. I thought there was a dance fighting scene. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Did you ever play the game? There's a lot of dance fighting. Uh, How do you write a movie about dance fighting anyways? A lot of people have. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, thriller. Thriller. <laughs> or well, beat it, I guess. Not well, thriller. No, I'm thinking, uh, what's the movie with... Uh, no, nobody puts baby in a corner. That's oh, a, uh, a dirty, a dirty dance. Loose. Those oh, are all um, dancing. Fight, West Side dance Story. Fighting. Actual dance fighting. Yeah. 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 Cup weather is dance That's fighting. just a lot of people dragging their feet. Yeah. They're saying, shh, shh, um, shh, shh. he did Unnatural History in 2010, and then he didn't write anything until 2018 when he wrote a movie called Salvation. All right. Um, we have a story by, story by credit. Michael Fallon mostly is, writes um, 
self-help books and sports history books. He has no other film credit. All right. Mark Verheiden, who uh, besides this wrote Terror Squad, Time Cop, <laughs> and My Name is Bruce. Oh, Time, time Cop. Cop. Time yeah. Cop. Yeah. Jean-Claude. Um, yeah. So uh, that's about it for so. The- I know that when you improvise, you don't get a screenwriting credit, but I mean, come on. Yeah, Jim Carrey Carrey wrote half his dialogue. Yeah, there's no, I don't know. There's no way most of this shit was on that page. Did they plan on something like that, do you think? Or do you think he went in? It was just new. Yeah, I mean. I think once you cast Jim Carrey at that point, you have to understand because they had seen Ace Ventura. They'd seen. Um, yeah, in living color. His, yeah. His process is wild. I'm sure that like dr- dropping all this money. I mean, a bunch of people did that year. Yeah. But yeah, it was probably an interesting thing to just see him running amok. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, makeup. when he's when he's the mask, there are certain scenes where they a- have to animate over him. So, yeah. you know, he, he had to stick to that. App- appara- other- apparently one of the ILM animators or the head of the ILM animation that did all of the CG on this, which at the time was. Um, incredibly yeah. like uh, oh, yeah. like futuristic, uh, <laughs> like far like. I thought yeah. it looked good. Last it, it holds night. up pretty well. Yeah, because yeah, it it's supposed to be very cartoony. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, absolutely. Um, said that um, by casting Jim Carrey, they probably saved a million dollars in animation costs. I bet. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we never should have hired <laughs> William Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, somebody stop me. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, real quick. Uh, Mark Verheiden, um, he would write uh, a lot of, uh, uh, well, I don't know about a lot, but television uh, episodes. He oh, oh, he's a oh, good. he was a writer for some episodes of Heroes, um, Battlestar Galactica, uh, Caprica, Falling Skies, uh, Constantine, and Daredevil, and Ash vs. Evil Dead. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Right. yeah, doing some good TV work there. Good, good genre. Um, so, um, Bruce, or Bruce, <laughs> Jim Carrey, <laughs> Bruce Carey, um, Jim Carrey. Um, so he got, he's Canadian. Yeah. That's all. What? <laughs> no. Um, uh, and he and his family, uh, were very poor. Um, there was a time when he and his siblings and his parents were all living in a single van. Yeah. Um, he, uh, had to drop out of high school to work as a janitor. Mm. Um, but uh, but he his his family helped support him when in his late teens he uh, started to try to get into stand up comedy. Um, he was noticed in a club by Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. At the age of I believe it was it was nineteen or twenty years old. Right. Um, and I'm sure it was funny from the beginning. But you know you look at him he he had to be the clown to survive high school. You know mm, I'm sure he did. Yeah. 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 Oh, for sure. Just cons- yeah. He's so rubbery. Flexible. <laughs> I bet he was hilarious in class. Oh yeah, not I bet. every not every person who's successful as a comic was the funniest. No, kid he, among their you, you can tell I mean? he was definitely like the, the funny. The funniest guy. people we all know would you know never made it. No, <laughs> I can't imagine Jerry Seinfeld was funny in high school. Yeah. In fact, he's the one that says that. Yeah, yeah. the funniest person is not that. Well, his he's all Jim, physicality and everything. Yeah, too. yeah. So it's that's I what mean, I mean. Babies laugh at it, you know. Like if the teacher called him up to the board, I bet it was a riot. Yeah, he'd do a yeah. his, fall on the way. His Jerry yeah. Lewis stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so he's made his dream. Yeah, so um, Rodney Dangerfield signed him on uh, to open for him. Um, he took him to open for him in his at his Las Vegas show. Um, and But then uh, Carrie decided to move to Hollywood. Uh, he began performing at the Comedy Store yep. um, in 1982. Uh, he performed on an evening at the Improv. And then the following year, he debuted his stand-up on The Tonight Show. In 8081, he auditioned to be part of uh, SNL. He did not get it. <laughs> and then in 1990, he was cast on In Living Color. Yep. And he didn't stop. No. No. From there it, on. It was it's just a, a rising star. Yeah. Another um, time where Lauren Michaels did the right thing by being an idiot. Yeah. He had he had a few prominent film roles in the 80s before he was, um, you know, really well known. Um, his first uh, movie was Rubber Face, which I know nothing about. Um the Sex and Violence Family Hour in 1983, All in Good Taste. All those sound like really like either indie horror indie. or indie comedy movies. Yeah. yeah. Made in L.A. Yeah. Um, let's see. His first movie I've <coughs> heard of him being in was Once Bitten, where he played the vampire. Yes. That the was vampire, his starring, yeah. his first starring role. 
Um, he was in Peggy Sue Got Married. Yes, he was. He was yeah. in The Deadpool with Clint Eastwood, yeah. who he does. Uh, and Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And Rob Liefeld says that's where the character's name came from. <laughs> really? From that film? From Deadpool. Yeah. 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 The Deadpool, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, he was in Earth Girls Are Easy. He I think one. that that's one the movie that I remember him first in. First, in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. After in Living Color. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Jeff Goldblum and Jim Carrey as aliens, multicolored aliens. Oh and yeah, Earth Damon Wayans and Damon Wayans. and Damon yeah. Wayans. That's yeah. right. Yeah, they look wow. like cats from cats. And his character's name was Whiplock. <laughs> oh, that's a name. Oh yeah, it is. Um, then he was in. Something called Doing Time on Maple Drive, which I have never seen or heard of. And then his next movie after uh, he left in Living Color was Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. That was so funny. Which like blew him up to star proportions. Uh, He was signed for The Mask before that movie came out, which is why he got so little for The Mask. Right. Right. Um, then, of course, he did Dumb and Dumber. We will see him again. Dumb and and Dumber. Yes. Uh, That movie. I mean, yeah, blew me away. Yeah. That was a hell of a movie. Um, I had no idea uh, that Jeff uh, uh, Daniels. Daniels was that funny. Yeah, nobody did. He's right. never been that funny since. I mean, he's been funny. Yeah, right, but not but like, not like that. that funny. Yeah. Um, we will see oh, him again in Batman Forever. Um, he did an Ace Ventura sequel, The Cable Guy. <laughs> um, what? The Cable Guy is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's very funny. It's it, haunting. I, okay, yes, you know what? To be is. fair, I haven't Wanna seen it. Talk in, about dark comedy. I haven't yeah. seen it in twenty years. That's one of the darkest comedies I've ever Successful seen. Successful dark yeah. comedies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, liar, liar. The Truman Show. That was yeah. Yeah. Wow. Other dark comedy. Yeah. Um, Man on the Moon. Um, I've actually seen that fairly recently. Andy Kaufman. Yeah, his his portrayal of Andy is amazing, but the movie itself is like super boring biopic. And yeah, frighteningly long. Yeah, yes, yeah, so long. There's a neat documentary though about yeah. Jim Carrey and Andy Kaufman. But it might have featured the last great REM, like original song. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. man, yeah, what a good song for real. <laughs> um, let's see, me myself and Irene. He played the Grinch. Ugh. In one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But he did a good job. But yeah. But he was good, yeah. <sighs> Never should have happened. Oh, wow. The Majestic. Uh, Bruce Almighty. Um, one of my favorite movies, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh, yeah. He's so good in that. Um, there are some good perform- Yeah. But- I, I love that movie. <laughs> I guess it just shrugged. So he's like, eh. <laughs> um, Lemony Snicket. Uh, he, um, yeah, he's kind of not done tons. I mean, he's done tons since then, but none of it has like been really that level of stuff. Yes, man was probably the last super big hit he had. Um, liar, liar is a funny movie. Yeah, liar, liar is pretty good. Um, he did the sequel, The Dumb and Dumber, which was pretty. Uh, um, th- and then, of course, right now he's in the number one movie in the world, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. <clears throat> That's, that's a, number one in the that's world. Number one right, right, now. right now, yeah. <laughs> this week, anyways. I'm well, sure, sure next week it'll be different. But well, I bet the Asian markets, yeah. yeah. We'll also see him again in Kick Ass Two. Kick Ass Two. That's right. Oh yeah, he's good. he's good in that. Um, we got uh, Peter Green as Dorian Tyrell, like '80s and '90s bad guy, yes, <laughs> like that <man>. look. <laughs> yeah. Or like you know, um, what is it, James? Uh, J- uh. Oh, what's that dude's name? James, not Spader. Uh, the who, who was in the uh, Apu episode of The Simpsons? Oh, James Wood. James Wood. Yeah. <laughs> it looks oh, yeah. like a, a low rent James Woods. Yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> no, James Woods is a low rent <laughs> James, James Woods. Wood. <laughs> he's a Republican nut job. I oh, think, I think he's he awful. Blo- yeah. I think he blocked me on Twitter. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> nice. I'm not joking. Um, so Peter Green starred in Laws of Gravity, Clean Shaven, but he was in Judgment Night. He okay. was in 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 '94 also in Pulp Fiction. He oh, was, he was Zed. Yeah, he was Far Zed. Out. Zed in Pulp Fiction. Oh yeah. Um, he was in The Usual sure sus- Suspects as uh, Redfoot the Fence, Under Siege Two. Woo. Um, Coyote Run, the rich man's wife. To this day, if I ever like take a wrong turn, find myself in a dark area of any town, I immediately say judgment night. <laughs> um, he's been in a ton of movies. Some we've heard of none of them like hugely um, uh, noteworthy. Uh, but most recently he's been in Justified. Um, the show. That was a good show. 
I felt justified in watching it. <laughs> That's good. It's nice. Yeah. Um, Cameron Diaz got her. This was the first thing she ever acted in. Period. Yeah. Prior to this, she was a model. Um, and prior to that, she went to Long Beach High with Snoop. Oh, that's right. He was her dealer. Yeah. <laughs> that's how the legend goes. Yeah. Um, Just her. Yeah. Uh, let's see. After this, her next movie was The Last Supper. She's the one <laughs> been feeling Minnesota head above water. Wow. She had not a whole lot of hits after this one until 1997 and My Best Friend's Wedding with Miss Julia Roberts. Um, a Life Less Ordinary. That's a Danny, uh, what's his face joint. Um, she was in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Then something about Mary. <laughs> I yeah, I really like that movie. Yeah, that movie's great. Um, very bad things. Being John Malkovich, Any Given Sunday, which is a ridiculous fucking I Oliver Stone it. movie. Oh I my god, love it. Ooh, Ollie Stone. Um, I love Any Given Sunday. Um, she was one of Charlie's Angels. Uh, of course, she was Princess Fiona in Shrek. She played a crazy bitch in Vanilla Sky. Um, oh, yeah. She was in The Sweetest Thing, Gangs, Gangs of New York. Oh, yeah. Uh, Minority Report. Wow, she was a uncredited cameo, Minority Report. Um, Charlie's Angels 2, Shrek 2, all the Shrek movies. <laughs> <laughs> Night and Day Shoot. We will see her again in The Green Hornet. Ugh. Yeah. Um, and the most recent film credit she has is 2014. She played Miss Hannigan in the remake of Annie. Hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got Reginald E. Kathy as Freeze. The, 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 uh, uh, what's his face? Um, Dorian's, uh, second in command guy. Oh, the guy from The Wire? Wasn't he on The Wire? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was in Funny Farm. Um, <laughs> Funny Farm. Born on the 4th of July. Oh, yeah. Loose Gannon's Quick Change. What about Bob? Quick Change. He was in both of those? Yeah. Oh. Crazy. Ah, I love both Clean of those Slate, movies. the Dana Carvey movie. Oh, we're talking about that. Clear and Present Danger, Airheads, Seven, Tank Girl, American Psycho, Pootie Tang, um, SWAT. Uh, ooh, yeah. Well, what recently? Because he has come back. Um, recently. Um, he was on Luke Cage. Yeah, that's the most recent thing he has of note. Okay. Um, His last like, movie? Yeah. Um, he, he, the most recent thing he did was Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I retract my question. Um, Arrestus Matasina as Nico. This is his only American film. He's mostly a Cuban um, a Cuba, actor. Yeah. Cuban. He's okay. mostly Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> Not completely Cuban. He's but mostly he's mostly bald. Uh, we got Peter but not Re- all the way. Peter Rygert as Lieutenant Mitch Kellaway. Boone from Boone. Animal House. Exactly, Mundo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I'm sorry. Um, he was played. Uh, he was in Hero, Crossing Delancey. <laughs> he was in. Oh God. Uh, let's see. He was in The Sopranos for a while. Damages. Uh, he was in Dads. Um, he won a, an Emmy for Barbarians at the Gates. Um, he was he, he was in uh, uh, One Tree Hill for a while. Um, oh. <laughs> we have Jim Dugan as Detective Doyle. Doyle. Well, um, and <clears throat> Peter Rigert's on uh, the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Oh, that's right. He's dating. He's the the rich guy that's uh, dating. Um, yeah, yeah. Carol Kane. Yeah, he owns uh, some like Whole Food type stores <laughs> called Big Naturals. <laughs> That show, uh, uh, big natural, uh, yeah. So Jim Dugan is Detective Doyle. Uh, he is uh, his first role was in Ruthless People. Um, mm. He was in My Stepmother's an Alien, Tarzan in Manhattan. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Flintstones. Uh, oh, Tarzan in Manhattan was a TV movie. <laughs> Still, yeah. Uh, he was in Stuart Little, um, The Extreme Adventures of Super Dave. <laughs> Oh, God rest your soul, Bob Einstein. Uh, let's see. The Flintstones, Viva Rock Vegas, Stuart Little 2, The Haunted Mansion, um, Evan Almighty, Hotel for Dogs. <laughs> He's got a ton of TV credits. He was in an episode of Night Court. Uh, oh, the- <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> we get it. He was on. He's in a lot of- <laughs> you guys remember um, the Charmings about the Prince Prince Charming? 
like oh, and his... taken from fairy tale days and brought forth to the, to the present in the late eighties, where they had to be in a sitcom. <laughs> that sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. I think it was a Fox show, like back when Fox wasn't in all of the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Richard Jenny played uh, oh, yeah. the best friend Charlie Shoemaker. Big, uh, big stand up in the late eighties, kind of like. Your prototypical late '80s like Jewish stand-up guy, like who yeah. are these? And he did, uh, he did some impressions. Yeah, yeah, he was quite a good stand-up. He was good. Yeah, he um, killed himself, right? Um, ooh, I yes, did, he did. Did wow. Okay, that's rough. Um, that would explain why he has no credits after a certain point. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. So same as uh, Max the dog, <laughs> right? <laughs> Jesus. Um, he was in Bird, um, Dad's Week Off, uh, ooh, Dr. Katz, he played himself for a while. Platypus Man was his last um, film role. Um, That's a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a pretty pretty funny TV show. Yeah. Jason Robinson. Um, let's see. Richard Jenny. Um, let's see. He, uh, yeah, in 2007. Is when he uh, passed on. Yeah. Amy Yazbek played Peggy Brandt. She was in House 2, Problem Child, Problem Child 2, <laughs> The Nut House with two T's for nut. <laughs> Ooh, Robin Hood, uh, Men in Tights. Um, she played Maid Marian. Uh, uh. Dracula, Dead and Loving It. <laughs> the Odd Couple 2. I forgot that they did a sequel yeah. to that in 1998. Yeah, I mean, she was familiar. I didn't yeah. know who she was, but yeah, now that you say been, these... She's been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. A bunch of... Tons of TV, Quantum Leap. I bet she said this pays dick a lot. Yeah. Oh, she was on Wings as a regular for a while. She was also in Platypus Man. Um, yeah. Uh, ben Stein Ugh. as Arthur Newman. <laughs> Former Nixon speechwriter. Got yeah. his start as a speechwriter for Nixon and Ford. Wait, what's yeah. his character name? Uh, Arthur Newman. I thought it was Alfred. <laughs> oh, Alfred. Um, maybe, Alfred. <laughs> maybe best known as the guy that says Bueller. Yes. Bueller. Yeah. Yeah. Bueller. Or when Ben Stein's when money. When Ben Stein's money. He's or been, all those Nixon speeches and being kind of a Republican. I, being a douchebag. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know that there were many speeches used, you know, but yeah, he yeah. was around. And I mean, he was in a gazillion things. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, yeah. When you needed that. And it, the 80s and 90s, like, everyone had their idea of the white guy. <laughs> like, oh, God, the yeah. White nerd. Ben Stein is the only actor who... For that. Ben Stein is the only actor who will return for Son of the Mask. Oh, that that's right. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, uh, he likes those checks. <laughs> yes, yeah, he does. Sure. Um, yeah, so... Um, capitalism. Yeah, he loves oh, yeah. He, he's all about capitalism and his money. Um, this movie was reviewed by Siskel and or Ebert. Uh, All right, so Jim Carrey was known, but he's not like what we know now. So right, exactly. So let's this hear. Is, let's you, hear. Yeah, what th this is kind of their Who, initial thoughts dismissive. on Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, he of the annoying overbite, is back in action as the mask, and I have to admit it, I enjoyed a lot of this film. Why did I like this picture when I loathe Carrey as Ace Ventura pet detective? Well. This time, he's got a lot of support from other actors, a fabulous dog, a real script, and some dazzling special effects. Carrie plays a meek bank officer who finds an ancient mask. When he puts it on, it gives him special powers and turns him into a character, a wild character, much like Robin Williams' genie in Aladdin. Both are nonstop mouths. Smokehead! It's party time! P-A-R-T. Why? Because I gotta! I mentioned that Carrie has a lot of support in this picture. One of the pillars is the gorgeous Cameron Diaz, a 21-year-old model making an impressive film debut as the mobster's girlfriend, who kind of likes Carrie as that wimpy loan officer. As I was saying about that tie, kind of reminds me of one of those, what do you call it, ink blot tests. A Rorschach test. Right. Yeah. You know, it sort of looks like a young woman riding bareback. And she can sing and dance, too. Not necessary, but we appreciate it. <laughs> More support, a dog. A great movie dog. A smart little Jack Russell Terrier that helps Carrie break out of jail, but has a little trouble reading lips. This is a classic comedy scene. <gasps> no, not, not the cheese, the cheese. 
cheese. Put the cheese down. And get the keys. Go on. Over there. Over there. As you can see, the mask is a lot of fun. It's more a jumble of stuff than a plot, but with so many juicy elements and Jim Carrey held in check, the mask is really hard to resist, and I didn't. I liked it. So you loved this movie, but no, you're so like grudging it. toward poor Jim Carrey. You even attacked his overbite. I have an overbite, too. In fact, you do? so do you, as a matter of fact. Not the same what's, kind. When you say it's annoying, what's annoying about oh, it? Oh, I find that what's annoying about him is that his, it's kind of... Uh, yeah. you know, Pred I'd, predatory animal-like. Well, look, we didn't like Ace Ventura, and so right. you probably walked into this movie with a kind of a negative attitude. And maybe no, I, I don't. Too. As a matter but of fact, I, I don't. I feel that Jim Carrey is extremely important to the success of this movie, mm -hmm. and that's somebody else in that character might not have done as good a job and you give I credit to true. everyone to special effects to Cameron Diaz who is beautiful to the dog who is very funny why yeah. not give some credit to the guy who plays I, the title I role was, I was trying to give some credit when he is yeah. held in check yeah. no when he is held in check uh -huh. I don't I don't give positive reviews grudgingly that's a that's a no, wait, you, I'm just, gonna, you just I'm finished say, saying that you wish that Pauly uh, Shore I'm, hadn't been held in check what, in the other movie uh, no, I said that he had warmed up and was nicer. I'm going to stay okay. right with Jim Carrey. Okay. I don't give positive reviews grudgingly. That's a, that's a rough characterization mm -hmm. because think about it. That means that I don't like to like something. Mm -hmm. I'm not like that. I love oh, to like pictures. What a wonderful, warm, but I'm saying specifically, guy. Thank you. What I'm, not the guy <laughs> that you think you're working with, apparently. What I don't like about Jim Carrey is that he's got that uh, predatory <laughs> thing held in check as an ingredient in the film. Okay. okay, he works. Okay, fine. Now that we've got that settled, when we come back in the land of the deaf, a documentary about people whose eloquence doesn't depend on the spoken word. <laughs> Woo, okay. <laughs> Who's going to hate that one? Oh, my. So, Siskel and Ebert. Mommy and Daddy were fighting. Ooh, uh, yeah, they were. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's about where we're at. Oh, this movie, by the way, has 77% of Rotten Tomatoes. Very oh, cool. solid, solid. Yeah be there yeah you know I'd C's get degrees, I guess. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not bad. Hey, everyone. Thoreau from Harmless Phosphorescence here with a message for you. Yes, you listening to me talk. Did you know that the Harmless Entertainment Network has a Patreon? That's right. You can join in and get extra fun like a Star Wars Harmless Phosphorescence miniseries, a patron-only Q&A roundtable episode. We have great bonus episodes of audio dramas like Attention Hellmart Shoppers in 1994. But not only that, if we reach our next patron goal, we'll do a monthly bonus Harmless Phosphorescence for essence about a patron chosen non-superhero movie plus there are great new shows on the way and if you're a patron you'll get to hear them first head over to patreon.com slash harmless entertainment today and for the price of a cup of coffee you too can join our super awesome superhero club now back to the show um so um you guys ready to get into this sure. yes here we go this is the max we open on edge city in the bay, an underwater construction worker discovers a sunken chest. He opens it, and a wooden mask floats away as he's killed by a pipe. Yeah. Um, that's got to be... Edge it. City. Yeah, Edge City. That's a, that's a comic book name for a city if I've oh, ever heard yeah, one. It yeah. definitely is. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, meanwhile, Stanley Ipkiss, a bank clerk working at the local Edge City Bank, is striking out with the co-worker he's trying to ask on a date. Um... I think at this point, Jim Carrey hadn't <laughs> learned to uh, to to be not rubber faced in when he's not being Jim Carrey. Right. Because, yeah, he's like just full on off the bat. I got tickets. Uh -huh. Yeah. He can't be a normal human being. Yeah. Not yet. Anyways. Not yet. Right. Yeah, liar, liar. He really, this he really is what they like. Yeah. 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 Within Truman a few years, show. he really gets there. Yeah. But yeah. He's still figuring. He's still just full Jim Carrey at this point. Um, yeah, that, this is what people want. He's delivering what the market wanted. Yeah, totally. Um, his coworker, best friend Charlie, convinces Stanley to go on a double date with him that night to the Coco Bongo Club. Yeah, hot new club. Yeah, <laughs> the only <laughs> club in town. Seemingly. Um, just then, Tina makes quite the entrance into Stanley's bank. Uh, she tells Stanley she wants to open an account. She flirts, he fumbles, and it's revealed that she has a secret camera in her purse to record the bank vault's layout. 
which is broadcasting live to her boyfriend, the gangster Dorian. Cool scheme. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. not send in, send yeah. in the, the looker and yeah. And the little camera in the purse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that gigantic camera. I know. <laughs> um, again, I hadn't seen it before, so yeah, yeah, it, it gets you on board right away. Yeah, it does. No intrigue. Yeah, no. This movie has it's, has zero fat. In yeah, it. like yeah. it is boom, bang, boom, go. Yeah, I agree. With a musical number or two thrown in between. Yeah, the dance numbers. It's kind of Bollywood They're, almost. If you, yeah, if you yeah, like, huh. it's a good point. Yeah. Just because the action yeah, cause, is so over the top and stuff. Well, and too. the dance numbers don't further anything. Yeah, like, they're yeah, just we, saying like Bollywood. It's, it's just like it's just time. All when, of a sudden, that we all do yeah, this there now. were like two guys shooting at each other, and then they start dancing. Yeah, and yeah. then there's a giant line of dancers. Like right. that happens in this movie. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah, not to say that this is Bollywood, but like that's what it felt like right, watching yeah. it as an adult and what, having seen some Bollywood now. Yeah, yeah as a kid, numbers, I had never seen any Bollywood. You big know? dance numbers. Yeah. Yeah, no, this... Uh, Many people. Yeah, th- they really took advantage of having Jim Carrey in the movie. <laughs> um, let's see. So Dorian and his buddy Freeze plot the bank heist and their takeover of their crime boss, Nico's territory. Later, Stanley goes to pick up his car from his shady mechanic to find out it'll take longer and cost more than expected. He's given a terrible loner car. The guy in the glasses is now a character actor in all kinds of things. And he often plays a gay character to the point where, I don't know, it's just overdone. He's a very annoying, but he pops up and everything. Grace and Frankie, he's regularly on right oh, now. But if you look him up, you know what I mean. Anytime they need that, yeah. The over flamboyant. The middle-aged, yeah. 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 Mm. Um, so that night, uh, Stanley arrives at the Coco Bongo Club for his double date. He gets separated from Charlie and the girls before he can get in and ends up being thrown into the street where his suit is ruined by a puddle. He uh, runs into Tina, flirts some more, and uh, leaves in the loner, which breaks down on a lonely bridge on the way home. <laughs> yeah, so that mechanic was so shady and so, like, dark, uh, you know, like uh, a poorly lit part of town, criminal-esque. But they give you a loner. Yeah. Shitty as it is. Yeah. Yeah. I've had like dealerships, <laughs> you know, relationships. That won't give you a loaner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like the, you should call the a bus cab. is right out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, so he uh, dejectedly leans over the guardrail and spots what he thinks is a drowning person in the river. When he rushes down to save the person, he realizes it's just a pile of junk. <laughs> and what he thought was a face was the titular mask from the beginning of the movie. And the cop's like, what are you doing down there? I would have just been like, I'm trying on a mask in a river. You tell me what law that right. is against. Am I under arrest? Yes. Am I being detained? <laughs> trying a mask on in a river. <laughs> Officer. It's like, I might even pee right, right now. Yeah. Well, that that's probably against the law. Yeah, right? I'm sure that might be. Right. I, don't I don't know if you don't take it out and just pee your pants. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Is that against yeah, the law? It's he's in the water. He just he's like, uh, sorry, I wasn't listening. I was just peeing my pants. Yeah, the ordinances you grossed me out. <laughs> uh, he finally gets home, soggy and tired, and his landlady yells at him for getting her new carpet wet. Landladies. Her name is Mrs. Peenman. Peenman. <laughs> oh. Um. That's what she's into. He gets in. T- <laughs> they chose that name. They yeah. He gets inside his apartment where he's greeted by his dog Milo. <laughs> he watches some TV. So he's got his whole thing. He's really into cartoons, like yeah, the old. Uh, he's got the Tex Avery. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Big Bad Wolf, kind of, which he uh, then emulates. Later. Red Hot Riding Hood. Yes, that's the, the cartoon. The yeah. name of the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of Looney Tunes in general, but. A, Particularly the Tex Avery style, yeah, yeah so, which was swing, swing era cartoons, yeah, yeah, exactly. Not the revival, the actual swing era, yeah, exactly. And so you know, it's very there's there's a lot there's that whole theme running through the movie, which yeah, is very which consistent. I love, and uh, I believe for uh, the son of the mask, um, the the character in that would be named Tim Avery after mm-hmm. Tex Avery. Ah. Awesome, awesome. Which <laughs> we we will get to that movie in I don't know, a year or so. Um, uh, so he uh, is greeted by Milo, who watches some TV, and then he sees an interview with a professor about some people wearing masks, metaphorical masks. And then in a moment of levity, uh, puts on the mask he found in the river. It wraps itself around his head, and he becomes a human cartoon tornado. 
uh, which uh, culminates in him becoming the mask, a green headed living cartoon who can defy the laws of physics. In in the background of the scene, there's a little Tasmanian devil pillow. I yep. just thought that was really oh, funny. Nice. Yeah, because uh, they it's there throughout the whole the whole movie, and he spins around in his living room right half a dozen times. But I just thought that was cool that they just kept pointing at like yeah We're doing the references this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well and Peen <laughs> Peenman uh, she even yells Peen like man. turn down your cartoons yeah got, like you know yeah. yeah. I don't well know. he is I blasting love cartoons, those cartoons so I really yeah is. he really yeah. is actually he is yeah yeah. Those are thin walls in Edge City. Um, <laughs> he decides he's going out to party. He has a run-in with his landlady uh, who shoots up the place. And then uh, another run-in with a dude in the car. He beats up a gang of tough guys that try to mug him. The uh, This scene the with the balloon animals yeah. um, is actually like a page straight out of the comic book. Oh, cool. oh okay. Um, I was able to come across it online. Um, he did the, the giraffe... And then the poodle. Um, there was a little extra in here. I loved the when he made the poodle for the second guy. Um, and then the balloon broke. The dejected look on his face. <laughs> yeah. He looked yeah. so sad. He's like a biker tough guy. Yeah. Um, and then broke. and then making the Tommy gun. All that whole thing was a, a full page out of the comic book. Cool. That that like was a great they, yeah. a great moment. Just the like I've got to put it down. Once the balloon popped, uh-huh. just he's yeah. I, I wonder how much of that was improv. <laughs> oh God, I'm sure yeah. a ton of it. Um, the Tommy gun, yeah, that was so fun. I do love how in uh, 80s and 90s movies, tough guys were always 40 year old bikers. Yep, yeah, <laughs> always overweight, Barrel overweight 40 year old biker bearded, dudes yeah. wearing a vest. <laughs> the guys, yeah. the guys writing this like were only scared by things in 1969. They only remembered the Hell's Angels, right. well, and a lot of their uh, inspiration was the that other movie, The Mask, with Eric Stoltz. Oh, and Cher. oh Jesus! <laughs> Oh big, shit! I watched the, bikers, the wrong movie. All the bi- yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Eric Stoltz is great. He wasn't that funny. <laughs> I wouldn't call him rubber face. So maybe it was the dad of rubber. <laughs> it seems kind of mean to call him that. Um, I had made a note. Uh, he put the mask on exactly 18 minutes into the movie. Uh, okay. Yeah. Wow. It was it's, it was tight. Yeah. Um, no, this like I don't know it if didn't leave us in. I don't know if this was done in the script stage or the editing stage, but it mm-hmm. is a smooth, clean machine. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. So he decides he's going to party. He beats up the guys. Um. He realizes he could be a superhero, but first he wants revenge. <laughs> yeah. And money. And money. Uh. I think it's a fleeting uh, thought. I don't think he ever follows up. Of being a superhero. No, no. Um, He goes to the shady mechanics that have been ripping him off and busts the place up. We fade out. Then the next morning he wakes up thinking it was all a dream. Um, The pajamas that he's wearing, while not an exact replica, uh, was an element from the comic books. He had had whacked the the scenes that I, uh, the, the pages that I saw, he was wearing wacky pajamas. Um, These pajamas so. weren't really that wacky, I thought. Yeah, um, but they they mentioned it in the the trailer. You know, right. Yeah, right. Well, well, it's a plot device later. Yeah, it, it, it so is. They just, just needed to stand out. They, well, yeah. I, I just right. thought they could have been wackier. Yeah. Like beat. Yeah. Yeah. Like a have b- like Bermuda shirt type. Yeah, yeah, something, something to make them. Tommy Bahama. That's what. <laughs> Good old Tommy. And his silk shirts. Um, the next morning, he wakes up thinking it's a dream until police detective Lieutenant Kellaway bangs on his door, asking if he heard the disturbance the night before. Um, Kellaway is investigating the incident between the mask and Stanley's landlady. Uh, the landlady shot the shit out of that place. Yeah, or, she, she's yeah, culpable. She should be in jail. Yeah, no, like the mask, the mask did far less damage than she did. Yeah. <laughs> she's insane. Um... Yeah, the detective leaves his card. Stanley realizes he's late for work, and as he gets ready, Milo finds his keys. Uh, Stanley tries to throw the mask out the window, but it magically spins right back into his apartment, unbeknownst to Stanley. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Calloway goes to Stanley's mechanic, investigating that incident. He's questioned by a red-headed reporter. (laughs) Stanley arrives at work late. Gets chewed out by his boss and wonders whether Tina will return. And he's the boss's son, we find out. Yeah, he's the son of the owner he's of the like bank. Yeah. Johnny Bank. <laughs> Mr. Bank. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's name's on the sign. 
<laughs> Joseph A. Bank. Yeah. <laughs> How did that man? I still don't know. Not that. Do it's like accounting bank business. Nah, I'm gonna do tailoring and suits. Stuff. It's oh, all suits, suits, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, but like the label say J O S dot. Like why do you why do you shorten Joseph to Jos, not Joe? <laughs> he's cut that, from he's a got that pan club. ass, bro. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it's style, I guess. So. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like it's unique. People know who I am. I'm Joe's, should, should Joseph I Banks. Uh, Charlie tells him to forget about Tina and suggests he dates the redheaded reporter who just entered. She introduces herself as Peggy Brandt and questions Stanley about the mechanic. So, Peggy, um, when she introduces herself to Detective Calloway, um, she gives credentials for one newspaper, and then when she introduces herself to Stanley, she gives credentials for a second newspaper. Ooh. Plot hole. No well, more intentional. It, it she's was a writing two stories. She's a freelancer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, huh. It was uh, the the note online was saying um, because she was making her break out of Ask Peggy. Oh, oh right. uh, that, okay. Um, so she was probably trying to freelance. Um, she was like and a stringer. She wasn't really with either of those papers. She was just throwing out um, the names of papers as sort of fake credentials. Well, oh. right, because um, she's a liar. Right. And it was also <laughs> mentioned that it yeah. could possibly have been a direct commentary on uh, newspaper reporters being liars. Ooh. Huh. Oh. Fake news. Um, Liberal media. Fake news, bro. <laughs> Ask Peggy. Try, with their, <laughs> their coronavirus <laughs> hoaxes. <laughs> yeah, Ask Peggy. So, oh, the proletariat needs to overthrow the... <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, they flirt a little. She leaves, and she gives Stanley her card. Meanwhile, Dorian, the gangster's boss, um, Nico, calls Dorian in to play some golf. Um, then... <laughs> <laughs> and scare him a bit because he finds out Dorian's running some small time scams on the side. See, and he gives him a bloody lip or yeah. something. Yeah, he he golfs on his face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I golf on your face. Yeah, it just wasn't very. You know, it was like a little. Nico wasn't like drop super. Of blood. Li- well, and then he gives Dorian a week. To get out, I know down. a week, a week. <laughs> like I understand how hard it is. You got to find a new apartment. You, you got to have your, your mail forwarded. You got to change your address with your credit card. Somebody, it's a process. Yeah, it is a thing. Yeah, um, but uh, I can't expect you to get out of town overnight <laughs> <laughs> to save your life. <laughs> you got to find a new coffee shop that I love. Hey, uh, he was completely bald except for. A weird ponytail the patch. The back, yeah. That was weird. <laughs> it was weird. It was very weird. There's no way it grew that way. Um, yeah. And like all a bunch of his, bunch of the other, his underlings had ponytails yeah. too. It was the, the, the ponytail pony- gang. <laughs> there was a lot of ponytails. <laughs> the pon- <laughs> They're bronies. No. The ponytail. The ponytail, yes. <laughs> the bro- yeah, because the real ponytail gang was a bunch of nine year old girls. Just as ruthless. <laughs> that were that were solving mysteries <laughs> in their neighborhood. Yeah. They called themselves superheroes, but they would break your knees with a crowbar. <laughs> they had to. That night Stanley dreams about They have to. <laughs> if you don't buy their cookies. That night Stanley dreams about Tina. He wakes up and spots the mask and decides to put it on again. He does some shtick getting ready to go out and realizes he doesn't have any money, so he comes up with a plan. Meanwhile, at the bank where Stanley works... (laughs) Well, yeah. Same as the bank, yes. Yeah. At the bank where Stanley works, Dorian's men are in the middle of breaking in to pull off a heist when the mask bursts out of the bank with bags of money. He spins away and Dorian and his men are left to deal with the police who show up just then. Meanwhile, at the Coco Bongo Club... The mask arrives, throwing money around. He goes in, watches Tina sing a song, and he takes over the band and does a dance number with her. Meanwhile. This is all terrible. This is the worst part of this whole movie, I think. The dance number? (laughs) Him, like, uh, flashing all this cash and being like, what I, as a six-year-old, thought was a cool person. Oh, Uh, yes. Watching this as an adult, I was just like, oh, wow, man. This is bad. Well, yeah, and he just, like, shoots money into the air. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But so yeah. All of his stolen money. 
It's 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 a lot of the cute stuff, a lot of the like most famous mask stuff where he's doing the whole like wolf thing. Yeah. And, yes. And yeah. like the, this is where a lot of the effects came the in. Cartoons. The spicy meatball. Tongue rolls out across the table. Yep. Exactly from that cartoon. Yeah. All the Tex Avery uh, cartoon stuff. So I I didn't get a chance to double check, um, but the the song when he like gets on stage yeah. and he like snaps at the the drummer and his outfit turns black. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. all all the bands they're all all their outfits turn black. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the lit. song that comes after that is Hey Pachuco by Royal Crown Review. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't get a chance to check. Was it the Royal Crown Review? That was Royal Crown the Review. The whole I mean the whole time? Oh, was it the band the whole that I don't, band the whole time? I don't okay. I would assume since but they in like that scene? Yeah, that oh, was okay. actual Royal Crown Review yeah. in that scene. Nice. I would yeah. assume that they were probably there. I mean, it would make more sense than having a different band, unless yeah. they, unless it was just shot on different days, in which case maybe they did. Yeah. But um, for yeah, for the day in December, definitely it was definitely yes. review. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so uh, the uh, freeze and the rest of Dorian's men arrive. Then and in the room in the back, Dorian's caught up on what happened at the bank. One of his men IDs the mask as the culprit behind the robbery. Just as their big number ends. Yeah, he's like, it's that dude. <laughs> the guy that's just spinning all around the club with the big green head. Yeah, I love how nobody, like, questions the reality-bending powers yes. he has. Yeah. He's, like, somebody get the military. Right. Yeah. Like, it's another situation where they're not as freaked out as they should be. No. But, but that's fine. But, but the, again, they're Doesn't playing hurt. Elmer Fudd to his Bugs Bunny. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I just remembered, sorry, real quick, uh, Royal Crown Review. Um, this song, Hey Pachuco, uh, appeared on their first album in 1991. Um, but then in their second album, uh, Muggsy's Move, came out in 1995 after this, and it was the first song on that album as well. Oh, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. <laughs> For a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like, that's all we got. Uh, this swing thing's gonna last forever, <laughs> just, like, then, just just like it did before. Just like it did before. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just as their big number ends, and the mask kisses Dina, his ties shot off by Dorian's men, and they clear out the club to take out the mask, who uses his Bugs Bunny style cartoon powers to evade the gunfire. Yeah, not since Cleavon Little and Blazing Saddles has somebody pulled off the Bugs Bunny. Vibe. Oh, it's yeah. hard to do an impression of a cartoon character, but yeah, he yeah. does it. Like he's, he kills it. Yeah, he's half Daffy, half Bugs. Yep. Like early Daffy when Daffy was like Daffy. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Looney. Around. Looney. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Looney indeed. He even does a spot on Yosemite Sam voice when he's got all the guns. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. He's so good. Jim yeah. Carrey. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. He. Uh. Flees just as the police arrive, and Lieutenant Kellaway arrests Dorian and his men for robbing the bank. As they're being arrested, Kellaway finds a piece of Stanley's pajamas, which was shot off him during the skirmish. He remembers immediately to whom it belongs. In those, fact, pa- those pajamas stand out. They yeah. do, yeah. Yeah, that was the- And he's seen a lot of men in their pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's got some dark pajama secrets. Well, and this was based on the children's book, Stanley's Pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stanley wanted revenge. <laughs> Stanley wasn't nobody's bitch. <laughs> he was going to murder the cartel in his pajamas. <laughs> yeah. The next morning. <laughs> we watched a lot of Breaking Bad. Sorry. It's all cartels from here on out. <laughs> the next morning. Yeah, Stan- but, sorry. No, <laughs> I was just, just going to say pajamas. Bad. Yeah. They <laughs> so just keep going. The next morning pajamas. <laughs> Welcome to Pajama Duck. The next morning, Stanley awakes to Kelly. Kellaway. I almost said Kelly and Conway. (laughs) That's a terrible way to wake up. George and Kelly and wake up in their pajamas. Oh, yeah. Uh, They do their funny little. Both pull out their phones and get on Twitter. It's opposite. eh? (laughs) Yeah, not since. uh, Who was it? Was it Carville and somebody? Carville and Matlin. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they're both still kicking around on Twitter. (laughs) I'm sure. Uh, Carville's around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lately. He was just, yeah. Yes, absolutely. He's he's being real angry on MSNBC. He's really yeah. mad about he's got a lot Bernie to say Sanders. About he's <laughs> really mad about Bernie Sanders. It's like, God damn it, Bernie Sanders. Ah, I love it. I love Carville. The rage fucking Cajun. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, he, yeah. So anyways, the mask shows yeah. up at Carville. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Carville's there. <laughs> and says, there is no third way, bitch. <laughs> um, so he has some trouble with Milo and the closet full of money. Finally, let's Kellaway in, who questions, who's very patient for a guy who's banging on a potential suspect's door, <laughs> who who alternately follows police procedure and does not in any right. way follow police procedure. He's like, uh, I, he, well, he knows that cops are like vampires. That he, they have to be invited in. That's, That's not true. Kid. Except, no, he opens the door and he barges inside and Stanley says, oh, come in, I guess. <laughs> um, that is, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he questions him about his the whereabouts the previous night and his missing pajamas. Stanley manages to get rid of Kellaway, but he's uh, even more suspicious when it turns out that none of Dorian's men left any fingerprints on the money. Meanwhile, Dorian offers 50 grand to whichever one of his men can capture the mask alive. He lets Tina know he didn't like the way she danced with the mask the night before <laughs> or the kissing. It wasn't in the paper. Was it on the front yeah, page? Like Lady Sing Song. Right. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. That woman yeah, that was She ordered. was a sensation. Yeah. Lady Sing Song. It's nineteen twenty three. One of I'm sorry, I'm tangent. One of my favorite Simpsons, you know, spinning newspaper things is when Homer faked his test and the beavers came out to attack him. But then the paper says local man loses pants, beaver rescue falls short. So I believe uh the the newspaper headline uh that came out the night before, her debut was uh, the night before, uh-huh. the night that Stanley couldn't get into the club. All right. Um, That's the, when she made the papers. The The paper came out, said, uh, bomb. I think it was Bombshell Blows Up Coco Bongo Club. Yeah, what? something like that. <laughs> what are these? Like, no, like you're saying, this is a big city. <laughs> it's like Chicago yeah. or New York. Edge City. <laughs> Sensational. <laughs> okay. So Stanley arrives at work. He tells off his boss. Charlie tells him he's got tickets to the big charity ball at the Coco Bongo Club. Yep, the charity ball. <laughs> the Which charity? Well, later you know, on, the we, charity. Later on, we see it's the world for fund. war orphans. What war? <laughs> yeah, it's not our world. It's Edge City. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, I, I guess. The, I guess there yeah, might have been a war. The one in Corto Maltese. <laughs> oh, we'll see that. There'll be flashbacks in Son of the Mask. <laughs> yeah. well, maybe this is the world where um, Harriet Tubman's from Wakanda. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the war. Oh. Did you guys see that? The picture of Harriet. So um, there was a bank that put out a Visa card with Harriet Tubman doing the Wakanda forever. No, that's <laughs> what? Amazing. Yes, are you? It's kidding a real me? thing. They put out a Visa card with, intentionally, they, they, or was that? They, a, like they thought a it. They joke? thought it was just like a Black Pride thing, <laughs> but it's her doing Wakanda forever. Harriet Tubman. Holy shit! Oh, that just depressed me. <laughs> All right, we're shutting it down. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they were on the underground railroad was just about getting vibranium <laughs> well, literally what, underground in in school we learned that the civil war was about slavery and vibranium <laughs> yes who controls the vibranium it was the north <laughs> spoilers <laughs> the south had to import all their vibranium yeah so <laughs> well, <laughs> all right so he wants Stanley to go with him to the charity ball. <laughs> Stanley says no at first. But Tina arrives and tells Stanley about the mask being at the club. She tries to find out if Stanley has any information about him for some reason. She admits she's interested in the mask romantically, and Stanley tells her he knows the mask and agrees to set up a meeting between the mask and Tina for that night. <laughs> Tina agrees to go to the park with a strange man in the middle of the night. Landfill park. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a trauma bill kind of thing. Oh, totally. Uh, Stanley visits a psychiatrist he saw on TV and discovers that the object may be a creation of the god Loki, which brings out the innermost desires of the person wearing it. Operative words could be. Ben <laughs> Stein is very lazily throwing out uh, <laughs> theories. Yeah, he does not know. Like, or maybe it's an old William Shatner mask. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, who can say? I'm, I'm the kind of author that goes on TV to talk books it's just turns into about out psychology right, right. Yeah. And then he shows up tell me about masks well <laughs> yeah I'm, i wasn't really talking 
about literal mast, <laughs> even though I have a whole wall full of them behind me. I don't know what any of them are. I think that one's a Groucho. Well, that was obviously supposed to be Joseph Campbell, Masks of God, yeah. Hero with a Thousand Faces. Yeah, thing. the masks we... Yeah, he, yeah. And he is, I get it. He but. is literally going to Joseph Campbell after he becomes a hero like, help me. I hear you know about masks. He's all uh, like, what a weird sure. way to approach the Joseph Campbell thing right. in your movie. Like, yeah. he's like, well, he's like, I'm not really so much about masks these days as laser swords. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm I'm already in with a guy named George. Sorry, I can't. So be it's in your weird movie. that <laughs> it's weird that wasn't in the comic because I like you know that worked that it was a uh, you know the Loki yeah mask yeah, yeah that God was cool of mischief yeah. yeah no that was pretty cool it's just a little weird now because. Because the of Loki MCU is oh. so like prominent. Right. I feel it actually even worked better now because we the public is much more accepting of Loki as a That's superhero true. adjacent thing. <laughs> superhero <laughs> Finally adjacent. Finally, kids know the Norse <laughs> mythology. Wow. Right. Uh, so big, big science. Yeah. So uh, Stanley tries to prove that the mask is magic, but discovers it only works at night. I guess. He's a night god. <laughs> yeah. He's a party god. He's working on his night moves. Exactly. Uh, he asked On the night train. <laughs> to Georgia. Saturday night fever. Um, night court. Night. He asked the doctor if he should meet Tina as himself or the mask, and the doctor tells him that he and the mask are the same person. Stanley leaves. And he, <laughs> it's actually so, whatever the fuck you want to do. Just get out. Yeah. <laughs> Stanley leaves and is followed by Galloway, who has a SWAT team standing by, apparently. <clears throat> that night, Stanley meets Tina at the park as Stanley. They share a romantic moment, but then Stanley changes into the mask and attempts to put the moves on her, a Pepe Le Pew style, when the meeting is interrupted by Kellaway, who attempts to capture him. Um, Cameron Diaz said that working one-on-one -on -one with Jim Carrey was like being in the middle of a tornado that went through a lunatic asylum. <laughs> <clears throat> um, She's like, and I would know. <laughs> <laughs> if you look into my backstory, you'll find out why. <laughs> the tornado hit that. It. <laughs> look into my backstory. <laughs> Secrets will be revealed. <laughs> me, me. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, Kellaway attempts to capture him. They do a ton of cartoon stuff. <laughs> The whole and like pocket butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the whole like pulling stuff out of his pockets thing. Like uh, yeah. there was a, yeah. a fish in there. The, right. the giant sunglasses. Mouse uh, the, mm, the mouse trap. The sunglasses the where he said, "I don't armor. know who those are." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the bazooka to which he responded, "I have a permit for that." Yeah, yeah. classic. Uh, uh, meanwhile, Peggy, the reporter, gets word about the bust and heads over to the park to get the scoop. The mask is captured, but then he easily gets out of the cuffs, does a big musical number. Cuban Pete, um, originally a Desi Arnaz joint. <laughs> it was yeah. uh, done on I Love Lucy. Yep. Um, and manages to get away from the police <laughs> who are doing a rumba. He takes off the mask, returns, returning to his Stanley form, and under a hail of gunfire, he is rescued by and flees with Peggy the reporter. They are just shooting the fuck out of him. Yeah. <laughs> and they're doing that thing Unloading. again. We talked about this in Meteor Man where some of them are standing behind the others who are shooting. <laughs> the tiered. <laughs> yeah. And also very close. Yeah. They're in. Ricochet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're in that range. alley. So he's demonstrating some powers of mind control here. But I was wondering, is this mind control power only related to song and dance? Uh, like, well, I think because with the balloon, there was some mind control stuff in there, the balloon animals. Oh, okay. Yeah. That seemed he's, like a little bit. Hypnotizing yeah, he, them like, with the balloons, maybe. Mesmerizes them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, either way, the mask is like crazy powerful. Yeah, so many. Um, so uh, they hide out at the newspaper press where they bond until she <laughs> reveals she's betraying him to Dorian for 50 grand. Dorian takes the mask and threatens Stanley, and then he puts it on and becomes big, angry, green guy. Yeah, that was neat. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so yeah, it's cool that he took on a different look because he's a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, um, they tie Stanley up. They go to his house and where they take the money from the robbery, and Milo follows them. As they go to the police station to turn Stanley in, 
He's thrown in a holding cell. Milo waits for him just outside the window in an alley. And then later he's visited by Tina. She tells him that Dorian's going to do something bad at the charity ball. <laughs> he's gonna. He's not going to donate anything. <laughs> he's going to sabotage the silent auction. He's going to eat all the shrampies. Yeah, he totally is. Uh, um, she and Stanley share a romantic moment. She tells him she's, uh, but they don't get to kiss. Um, I didn't notice until the second time going through that they have two missed kisses, and then they finally get it in the third. Um, she tells him she's going to go to leave the city. As she tries, as she leaves the police station, though, she's captured by Dorian's thugs. Stanley notices this through the window. <laughs> That's a very window. Uh, yeah, that's a very uh, convenient window he has. <laughs> um, and uh, decides he has to uh, escape to help her. He calls Milo, who jumps up and goes into the cell with him, and steals a set of keys from the sleeping guard. Yeah. As it was set up earlier, Milo can fetch keys. Yep. Not the cheese. Not the cheese. Mm-hmm. The he's, keys. He's more interested in the cheese. Yeah. It was a cute moment. That's yeah. oh, totally. We're not saying much about this movie because it was just kind of good. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, um, yeah. So then, uh, Dory- sleeping cops. Yeah, the cops who fall asleep on guard duty. Thank God for you them. Otherwise, movies would anymore. would end a lot. Yeah. yeah now yeah. the the, uh, the police union sued. <laughs> Too much sleeping. <laughs> Dorian and Tina, meanwhile, are on their way to the ball. Dorian's got some dynamite. Stanley escapes from his cell, steals the guard's gun, and takes Lieutenant Kellaway as hostage. He escapes from the police station with Kellaway by pretending to be in his custody and heads for the ball. Meanwhile, Dorian puts on the mask in the limo. They arrive at the ball, where Nico and Charlie are partying, and he makes a big entrance. A firefight breaks out between Dorian and Nico's men, and Dorian kills Nico with the power of the mask. Stanley arrives, leaving Milo and Kellaway in the car to call for backup. He sneaks in to find Dorian, stealing the charity money uh, and tying Tina to a tree, then rigging the place with dynamite. He finds, uh, Stanley finds Charlie, gives him the gun, and tells him to start sneaking people out the back. We see that the mayor is being held hostage. The dynamite is rigged to go off in ten minutes, and as Stanley is about to confront Dorian, he's discovered and taken captive. Meanwhile, outside in the car, Milo unlocks the door and runs inside the club. Back inside, Tina tells Dorian she wants one last kiss from him. Oh, um, the uh, Detective Calloway is uh, tied up in the car, or handcuffed in the car, with uh, with Milo. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, Milo is a really good part of this movie, because yeah. he, like, uh, opens the the door with his teeth like he pulls up the lock Mm -hmm. and then like manages to paw the the handle oh yeah oh yeah and and Kellaway a raptor Kellaway makes a comment he's just like smart dog yeah yeah Um, (laughs) we should recruit him for the force (laughs) you know in his own way Kellaway was just as over the top as Jim Carrey was but like in a completely like blank faced like badger eyed way (laughs) um (laughs) Grizzled, yeah. yeah, or he was like, ugh, I don't know, a little over the top earlier with the Cuban Pete uh, scene. Um, what was Dugan? Uh, du- what was his character? Doyle. 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 Um, Doyle. Yeah. Doyle. Doyle starts to dance a little bit, and he's Give like, "So help me, Doyle, if you start dancing, I will shoot you." Yeah. Yeah. Um, Boy, you. Yeah, he 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 plays less grizzled and more just annoyed at everything. Yeah. <laughs> um. I don't know what his deal is. <laughs> so uh, Tina wants one last kiss from uh, Dorian's normal face. So he takes the mask off. And as he kisses Tina, she kicks it out of his hand. Um, it's caught by Milo. And then Stanley tries to rescue Tina, but is attacked by Dorian, who starts beating him. Milo manages to put on the mask and becomes a vicious cartoon demon dog. <laughs> Stanley gets the upper hand on Dorian and gets the mask off Milo, only to be attacked by Dorian's men with guns. He puts on the mask and takes out Dorian's men, swallows the dynamite, and flushes Dorian away, Dorian away Wiley Coyote style. Yeah. He paints the handle on the tree and then flushes it. Yeah, perfect. This is where he does the, the spot on Clint Eastwood impression mm-hmm. with all the guns. Yeah. And then uh, swallows the... The dynamite. Which explodes in his stomach. That's a spicy meatball. Uh. (laughs) Which for you kids, that was from a commercial. Um, 
So uh, they, uh, let's see, the police arrive, arrest the remaining henchmen. Callaway attempts to arrest Stanley, but the mayor tells Callaway to release Stanley, believing Dorian to be the mask. Then as the sun rises the following day, Stanley, Charlie, and Tina arrive at the bridge. Wait, where did Dorian go? He got flushed, right? Yeah, I assume he's dead. He he's went just, to heaven. Yeah. He just disappeared somewhere? Because there's they not just... an actual, like, there's no plumbing actually No, there. no, there isn't. He, um, the, the mask, he warped reality to, to make that yeah. thing. So he's just oh, you're right. gone. So it's not the municipal he they, the, As far as the police are concerned, he may, might still be out there. Uh, yeah. yeah, they don't know about that. Yeah. But he may or may not exist in some sort of alternate, like, cartoon well, reality at this point. And yeah. children, don't flush your villains down the toilet because yep. they no. don't die. They just grow larger. Yeah. They'll probably clog your pipes. Yep. They yep. will eat Ninja yeah. Turtles and Punishers. Take, take, <laughs> <until they're... laughs> take, take your villains to the pound. To the pound. To Where they can be field. fostered. <laughs> All right. I, I just put mine down the garbage we, dispenser. Well, we, we, yeah, <laughs> we saw how this happened before grounds. with the penguin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They grow to enormous sizes. Uh, Snatching children. Oh. So, uh, Black goop. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's more what I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> we all have concerns. <laughs> this is important to me, guys. Why are you laughing? Oh. So Stanley's going to throw the mask away. He asks Tina if she's sure she doesn't want the mask over him. And then Tina throws the mask into the water as she and Stanley finally kiss. Weird move. Yeah. Charlie. Just throw it away. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. like put it somewhere safe. Just toss it in the water. Right. Or I try to it. destroy it. I found it in the river. I'll just put it back where I found it. Right. And I see that it can attach to anybody. And based on their motivations, it'll. But yeah, it'll be fine. We just saw this. In. Even animals can put it on. So some like pike. Or whatever Some fish. Some crazy was. ass fish. <laughs> yeah. I say that down. Oh the fish. I don't know where it's. Big it head is. trout. <laughs> I just imagine yeah, like big, a big head bass. An Iron Man 2 scene no, where they deliver it to man. the military where he's just like, ah, uh, I have to give this to the president. <laughs> oh. Just the president. <laughs> like, oh, oh, woo. Yeah. <laughs> give it to Ben Stein. He'll no. pass it along. Oh, so, so we see, we've. We saw throughout the movie that um, the the mask was affecting his mind and sanity. Yeah. Um, it was also becoming an addiction. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. He was like, not going to do it. Right. Yeah, exactly. He, he At one point, he even tossed the things like, nope, 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 and tossed oh. it behind the couch and then couldn't go for five seconds without yep. jumping over and Next thing you know, putting it back on. So, so he's like a he, huffing duster. It would have been difficult for him to keep around uh, and not wear. So they yeah. had to get rid of it. It was still a... No, they didn't get rid of it. That's the It point. was still... Yeah, I mean, they had to try to get rid yeah. of it. But it's still a bad it, way to get rid of it, just yeah. to throw it you back in the river. You could put it in, like, a lead box and, and bury it. Well, that's what happened at the, at the beginning. At the beginning, someone oh, obviously yeah. put it in the chest and right. sunk it. Right. In the, in the comics, uh, Detective Kellaway, when he decided that it was power was too much for him he encased it into a block of cement all right and kept it in his basement well <laughs> See, he should have put it somewhere <laughs> yeah. else right he should have uh indestructible eventually cement. um it was stolen out of everyone knows you can shoot cement off anything yeah <laughs> with a couple of guns um <laughs> it was stolen by thugs As seen later in the shadow later on the film, yeah. yes but the shadow the cement was enough for him to for him to I don't know. <laughs> Burglars. Yeah. So anything of valuable you see, jewelry, electronics. If you see a giant block of cement, grab that. Yeah. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, then uh, then Charlie jumps into the water only to find Milo swimming away with the mask already. Yep. Credits roll. Dun, 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 dun. That was the mask. Um, We zipped through that bitch there. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. There's not a lot. This is making me nervous for when we get to movies, <laughs> like like good movies. <laughs> oh, it's not having much to say. Yeah. Although, I don't know. We had plenty to say about, like, Batman, and that was yeah. a good movie. Yeah. I think we'll be all right. Yeah. So, um, what... Uh, we don't have to do two and a half hours of- <laughs> every time, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we're still at a solid hour and a half right now, so I guess we're doing a okay. Um, we okay. haven't voted yet. This could take a while. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Any uh, final thoughts on the mask here, guys? Before we get to that detail, the, the mask. Uh, it, it aged well, you know. Oh yeah. Other than the swing stuff, it's not dated at all. But like we joked, the yeah. swing stuff was dated then because it was from the yeah yeah. yeah. Um, but no, there was no like jokes. There were some like TV commercial punchlines and things, yeah. but there was nothing you wouldn't get. Yeah, lots of smoking on screen, which is right. always interesting to see. Well, yeah. Was that, oh yeah. yeah. And you may not know those cartoons, but any kid would know. That's cartoony. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of smoking yeah, in Looney Tunes cartoons. Well, I mean, and then also the effects yeah. and All jokes that. as far as dating. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, you may not get the specifics, well. but, but kids understand the language of cartoons. Right. Oh, yeah. So it aged well, you know, still funny. Yeah. The the swing stuff worked really well time-wise uh, for this movie because the, the swing resurgence uh, was around 1989, uh-huh. um, but tied in so well with um, the cartoon uh, that they employed as a plot device. Yeah, Uh Um, because that took place in 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 a club era, and in a club, yeah. And the 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 wolf did a dance scene with the with Hot Riding Hood. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And she was singing the number, and then there were other wolves because you know you know there was always wingmen. Yeah. Uh, So I had I had fun rewatching this movie. I think I maybe appreciated it more now than I did when it came out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely did because well, because I mean, at the time there was this whole like Jim Carrey's like this new crazy guy. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I wasn't on board yet because I I have a, a distinct memory of watching Dumb and Dumber, and that's when I finally was. So yeah. I think it's better I didn't watch it then because I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit now. I uh, had a cousin who completely adopted Jim Carrey's multiple personas. Oh yeah, no, a lot of people. Oh yeah. god, yeah. I think we all it was kids. it was just constantly he had a little personality of his own. A bunch of like ten um, and tw- ten to twelve year olds, such so like right. somebody stop me and gangly. Yeah, yeah kids, kid. Yeah, so. I couldn't pull it off. I was, you know, short. He kind of ruined Jim Carrey for me for a little while. <laughs> I, <laughs> this cousin, this cousin, I, I remember. I, thought I was going to. I remember. Kill him, um, and then. I remember when we were in high school. Some a certain, a, a few certain kids doing a fire fireman bill. What was it? Fire oh, marshal. Fire, fire marshal. Fire bill, marshal yeah. bill, yeah. which was super annoying. Very, even then, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to mention my cousin's name, um, but if you're listening, you know who you are. You know what you did. And you have to think about that. And but, you're not alone. I was doing the same shit. Everyone. Yeah, did. yeah oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you're not alone. No, everyone did. <laughs> everyone had their Jim Carrey, you know. Yeah. Even adults had it. Yeah. The adults were the annoying ones. The kids yeah. doing it, it's like, okay, you're a kid. Right, that's what we did it, you know, on Monday morning on the schoolyard. Yeah. yeah. Saturday night, Live, whatever shows. Yeah. 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 So. You're a kid, you're a parrot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got no fucking original ideas. Uh, so, uh, guys, ranking this thing. Um, so, I have a quick question. Is this movie better than Swamp Thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. But is this movie better than Dark Man? Yeah. 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 Is this movie better than Superman 2? No. Eh. Okay, because Swamp Thing's higher than Superman. Oh, no. So oh, no. You I was, tricked me right I was, yes. I was thinking about this a couple of days ago, and we cannot use Swamp Thing as a metric any longer in our rankings. It's an aberration. <laughs> it is a weird is aberration. aberration. Yeah. I love Swamp Thing. Yeah, we can, we, we can we ask. Know why we like No it. regrets. We can ask the question, is this not movie better, better than Swamp Thing? But we cannot use that as a metric for placing... Okay, so it's so, not better than Superman 2. I, I think for the podcast that we do, the theme, um, that movie, yeah, I don't think it's better than Superman 2. I think Superman 2 fits better. Yeah. Was this right. movie better than The Crow? Um, For me. Because yeah. The Crow is higher than Swamp Thing. The, the Crow is, The Crow we have way up there. But it was almost, I, I, it made me think of The Crow in the sense of like, well done movie, tight. Story, it bad was. guy, good guy. You know. Yeah, it was. It was very similar. I mean, to the but cr- I liked it more. It's fun, brighter, cartoony. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it was more, more of you. Yeah, it, it it spoke to you more. 
as far as its aesthetics go. Right, right, right. Um, as far as what it was trying to accomplish, I think it and the crow were pretty, like you said, pretty, pretty similar. Close. Yeah. And as far as how successful they were as films. Um, so it's definitely better than a very Brady sequel. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I really liked a very Brady sequel. <laughs> it was good. I think a very Brady sequel is actually better than the first Brady Bunch movie. But <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, um, all right. What are our top five? Our top five. Okay. So at number five, we got Batman 66. Number four, we got the crow. Number three is Batman returns. Number two is Superman. And number one is Batman. Okay. What's number six? Number six. Swamp swamp thing. Thing. <laughs> Superman two at seven. Yeah. The Rocketeer at eight. It's better than the Rocketeer. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so here's yeah. the big question is, does it go eight? I like that. You like eight? I like yeah. That. Al, what do you think? Yeah. At number eight, right below Superman 2? Yes. All right, I can live with that. Here we go. The Mask goes in at number eight. Um, Let us know what you think. We also have a poll, or we had a poll. We had a poll. That is over. Yes, I know. The poll is over. And we're actually... Who who won? We will have others. Let's talk about that now. Okay, Code. So, um, probably premiering right after this um, episode uh, goes out, um, we will be recording... A special Patreon episode. Every month we are going to record a Patreon non-superhero movie episode. And we ask you, you the public, go on our Facebook page, uh, hit us up on Instagram, Twitter. um, and uh, Send us a raven. Yeah, you you can email us at harmlessentertainment at gmail.com at your answers. But... um, um, Every month. Every month, we uh, are going to add, each one of us will nominate a film from a specific year. The year is chosen randomly. The first year that was randomly chosen was 1996 for the month of March 2020. Yep. We're going to do a movie from 1996. Um, the four movies that were nominated, I nominated The Island of Dr. Moreau. Oof, I wish I, I did um, Independence Day. Uh, Space Jam. And now, from dusk till dawn. And we put up the poll. We have a winner. We are going to be recording an episode wherein we do Independence Day. Oh, yeah. mm. We should do a do- I wish Dr. It was Moreau, Moreau. Yeah. Uh, one just <laughs> bonus for the pain. That movie is insane. It really is. There's um, some great stories. But, but Independence Day is fun. Everybody knows yeah. it. It'll Stay be a tuned. good one. Oh, yeah. So, Welcome so, to Earth. Um, we'll be Earth. Do, um, later than this month, uh, we'll be... Uh, do, we'll be putting out another poll for the April movie. We'll, yep. we'll each put that one up, so look for that one. Um, and if you want to hear these episodes that you w- vote for, yes, go to patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. Right now, we have a special running. The first 20 people who sign up that are not already signed up will, uh, for $1, be able to sign up to hear our monthly movie. You don't get to hear all of our other uh, patron uh, stuff. We do a whole Star Wars series. We do a monthly bonus one. We've got a ton of... Uh, of uh, um, in Attention Hellmark Shoppers in 1994 bonus episodes. Um, those are all on there. There's lots of other stuff. A Personal History of Sound is a podcast that will be free sometime in the future, but it's not currently. You can only hear that at patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. So there's a ton of other stuff that you do not get with this, but if you sign up for a dollar, you do get the free monthly movie. The free monthly movie. The first 20 people to sign up can get that. And you'll have a say, a vote. Yes. In the, yeah. And anyone can vote. You don't have to sign up to vote, but you don't get to hear the episode if you don't. Right. So um, that's going on. Um, so uh, look out for that now. Meanwhile, next week on Harmless Phosphorescence, we are going to be watching. Oh, it is yet another, <laughs> another um, in Turtles. living color. Oh. And yet another. David Wayans. In Blank, Blank Man. Man. Blank Man. Oh, it's here. Will this movie I've never seen that. Will this movie be as good as The Mask? <laughs> will this movie be as good as The Meteor Man? Uh. Ooh, yeah. This is only our second African American superhero. Wow. Yeah, then there's not gonna be many for a while, right? Uh after Spawn. that I think it's B- Spawn and Blade, yeah. yeah. But uh, Blade, yes, of course. But um Steel, eventually. Steel. Oh, Steel, yeah, we got Steel coming up. <laughs> Slow. We got a few. Ram. Yeah. Not as many as there should be, but a few. Pride. <laughs> steel. <laughs> <laughs> the, the eighth deadly sin is steel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is core. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's next week. Blank Man. We will be uh, watching that movie. And so this has been an American with balls of steel, Thoreau Smiley. And I am Josh Cece. I'm an actor known for The Mask and Mr. Accident. 
<laughs> I'm Brian Leshen. What is the world coming to when a man's pajama drawer isn't safe? <laughs> I'm Alaric Weber. I'm due back at the lab to get my bolts tightened. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Harmless Phosphorescence was brought to you by executive producer Atticus Burkett. Producers Michael Beckwith, Jojo Birchtree, Hedda Paulson, Kirsten Reed and Alyssa Dent, and Katie and Finn Thorpe. Make sure to rate and review us on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Harmless Phosphorescence is a part of the Harmless Entertainment Network. Become a patron at patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. Thank you for listening.